Hey, hello and welcome. It is episode You're doing 47. the hello and welcome. Fine, fine. You just do the hello and welcome, <laughs> then, Anita. You go ahead. It's a, I look so pale now. This is so like like next to your vibrancy. I'm very I'm very pale. I'm gonna work on my uh, I'm gonna work on my stuff here for just a second, guys. Um, welcome everybody. How are we doing today? Welcome back to Ahead of the Game. I'm back. I'm finally back at home. Uh, I've taken the the camera that I was supposed to be using in the office setup that Benefactor had taken down and put back in a box, which is is back in a box, Paul. So it's it's going back into storage, unfortunately. Um, and I've taken that camera and I've put it here uh, so that hopefully uh, I will look better. Um, and uh, yeah, let me let me fix this here, man. I I am corpsey looking here. 
<laughs> let, me, let me just uh let me just do this here a little bit i feel that's a little better there we go you're just you're just you're just prettier than me anita that's all that's all i've got to say <laughs> so, yeah a little bit of a little bit of life um so anyway, guys, uh, welcome to Ahead of the Game. It has been a long time since I have been here on Ahead of the Game, and it has been an incredibly busy uh, year so far. And so I'm super excited to be here with all of you guys today. Um, we've got a lot of really interesting and amazing stuff. We've got a great run of show, uh, but I want to uh, remind everyone to like, subscribe, follow, do the notification bell thing and all of that. And uh, we're going to do a bunch of uh, really, really meaty updates um, from across the ecosystem. Uh, and then we're also going to be digging into a uh, very substantial AMA section. Uh, and I'm going to be helping deal with uh, all of that. And, um, yeah, so let I gotta give you my confetti, Paul. That confetti is still substandard confetti. We, we <laughs> gotta do better. We gotta do the people demand better confetti. Um, so anyway, uh, let's let's take it away, guys. All right. So um, you guys also don't forget to join Discord. Join the discussion, okay? So like Jason was saying, we have special guests today, and Jason's here, obviously. So that's another yay on everyone's part so let's get started yeah, i don't know so, it's, it's, it's <laughs> oh come on you have been missed like we need you there's lots of questions that we need you to answer we need to pick your brain there are there's lots of questions so people have lots and lots and lots of questions um they have uh paul we actually need a salt um filter too so we can do like somebody pouring salt over the top of things <laughs> i think that would be a nice thing to have occasionally um so anyway, yeah, we'll, we'll be getting into all of that, guys. All of it. All right, so let's get started with music. So you guys, if you haven't already joined Gala Music in our Discord and actually signed up for an account, all of that good stuff, why not? Get on it. Like you see that, sorry, you didn't see it. You heard it. You heard that dope ass track already, right? So like, if you want more, get on to Gala Music. Like, what are you guys doing if you haven't been there? There's so much shit to listen to. Like, ah get there okay so with that being said good paul just finished up a stream um with gala music with the artist emily Fay on the app so make sure you guys go check that out because um we did miss her i think during the music takeover so it was really nice to have her sit down and get a conversation in with her so get listening you guys there's some good stuff out there and there uh, really is i'm i'm always super impressed with the quality of the the artists that are, are coming to the platform and and with the entire community and those of you guys from the music community um you know crypto lion uh keha all of the keja sorry keja um you know all of those people i i promise i will be back in there we've got some really really chunky updates for that i worked uh, extensively with the music team over the last few weeks uh, to nail down a, a roadmap with a lot of detail, a lot of granularity. And one of the really critical things is it's now no longer just a roadmap that is just a music thing separate from everything else. So there's critical pieces of music infrastructure that we're looking at building into core as a whole. So some stuff that was going to happen in just music previously is now going to happen platform wide and get a lot more support in that regard um, on a back end from a back end perspective. So lots of good stuff happening there. All right. So moving on to film, you guys, as you guys know, the platform launched on the 12th. And guess what? Razor is here. So if you guys haven't watched it, why not? Again, why not? <laughs> it's free to watch. So get in there, get watching. Like it is something different, a little bit scary, but it's very relatable. So I'm not going to spoil anything for you. Make sure you watch it and then we can talk about it. Because if you don't it's watch it, of, what are we supposed to talk about? You know, it's one of those things that when you watch it, you're like, I kind of feel like I do this. Mm -hmm. I, I I would very much be the type of person trying to, you know, jam a chip into my brain. That's, yeah. I wouldn't be sure. surprised. I, I wouldn't start with my brain, though. Like, maybe like a magic wave chip in my hand. That makes more sense. I think that's just like, called a cell phone. That's, no, that's that no, no. That's like, have you seen? Okay, I, I watched a video and it showed like a lady that implanted her bank chip 
into her yeah. hand and she went like this and i was like that's the dumbest thing you could do because what if it like demagnetizes and then you need a new chip it's happened to me like I mean, it, way it, too many times so then you not have to remove it. not quite how that works <laughs> but 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 okay um you, the, the, there are definitely ways that that can be done you there's can different ways those, okay. <laughs> uh, you can get one of those little flipper zero things to uh to store all your uh, credit cards on too good times uh, um <sighs> okay uh and don't worry guys i'm seeing your questions in the the uh youtube chat uh anthony hb uh, oh, a lot of that them. <laughs> um I'm, I'm seeing them i'm seeing them i will come back to those uh well i won't come back because honestly i'm not going to scroll all the way back up through the thing but if you watch until the very end of this there will be a very very beefy uh chunk where i will answer those questions so hold the hold the questions unless they're about exactly the thing we're talking about right now um until later and then you know we'll we'll come back and review all of that. But also remember that I think there's about a 45 second lag between uh, when we say something and you actually see it on YouTube, something like that, 30 seconds. Um, so we may miss things. I apologize for that. You can always come back and ask the question later. Absolutely. And if you miss them, go into Gala Gold. Jason will be there the whole time. I <laughs> I, I am in Gala Gold. I'm watching uh I'm I'm watching Subspace talk about potato chips right now. I don't know. I don't know what that means. I don't know why we're talking about potato <laughs> chips, but I like potato chips. So I'm happy. All right, Jason. So let's talk about Gala Chain. Let's do it. So Gala Chain, there's uh there's there's been a lot of work that's gone on uh in with Gala Chain recently, guys. And I know that you guys have seen some of you have been working with the SDK. We are onboarding projects absolutely like mad. I'm going to be in Asia all next week signing projects. Um, Dr. Wookie, that is a deep cut. I do look like I've lost weight. Good lord. Okay. Um you know, so so there's there's a tremendous amount of work that is is going into this. Uh, but one of the next things that's going to be coming out here, and I tweeted about this a little bit the other day, uh, is the fact that before too terribly long, you are going to be able to deploy your own tokens on Gala Chain uh, with a just a simple burn of Gala, and then you have your own tokens. Um, there is also going to be a percentage of all new tokens that are created on Gala Chain that will automatically be granted as mint allowances to uh, to Founders Node operators. Uh, so make sure that you keep your node up and operating because you never know who's going to create the next whatever thing on Gala Chain. And is a tie in to this, Gala Swap is absolutely popping off like crazy. Um, there has been, there was two days ago, I believe, a, a $10 million buy wall for Gala in USDT. Um, that has been consumed. Whoever has been using that has been. Uh, you can actually see on the blockchain, it's kind of cool. You can see them making uh, tr transactions on Binance, bridging the Gala from Binance into uh, Gala chain, making trades on Gala, Gala swap, and then moving out from there, um, you know, back to wherever they're moving it to. So it's really cool to see people coming in and using that. Um, and we also released the, I think we pushed the article on the API. I think we did. We released the API. So you can actually make trades using an API. So you don't even have to use the Gala Swap interface if you don't want to. And so there's going to be a lot of uh, new and interesting things that are, are coming with that. So pay special attention there. Um, okay. And let's see. Oh, what's next? Let's Oh, oh, one other thing on the run of show. I always have to look at the run of show and remember the next thing that we're supposed to talk about. There is a bug when canceling an order on uh, Gala Swap right now. If that order has been partially accepted, we're aware of this. Engineers are working on it right now. Hope to have it fixed pretty soon. So if you're in that weird little edge state where somebody accepted part of your order uh, and then not, not all of it and you tried to cancel it, it creates this little error state. That's in the process of getting fixed right now. So don't worry too much about that. Okay, take it away. All right. So with the marketplace, so Legends Reborn bridged NFTs are now appearing in their correct collection. So if you want some Legends Reborn stuff, head over to our marketplace. Go take a look. Other than that, new updates to the knowledge base. So we have install a theater node on Mac OS. So that's a film node. And then a series in setting up Gala node software. In the same series, it'll be Gala node v3 software on Windows, Ubuntu Linux, and Mac OS. And the last one in that series is going to be the Web3 wallet. 
Now, last of all, the only article updated this week is workload information for node licenses. So if you don't really know what the workloads are, make sure you click on that, go give it a gander and uh, update everything that you need to make sure your nodes work. And that and then, would be, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> that was it for uh, the knowledge base. Now, two game updates. Yay, Voyager Ascension is first. So let's kick things off with the first third party game coming to Gala, Voyager Ascension. Okay, so we have a release date of April 23rd. And don't forget that we have a chat tomorrow on X with Tony and Luke and Jason um, with Reflex Studios. So that'll be on X again. Um, I, I, I kind of want to call it like Twitter space, but it's more X space now, isn't it? I, I'm not really sure how to address it, but it'll be on X. Make sure you guys are there. It's going to be 10 a.m. Pacific time. Okay. Make sure you guys all join. Now we have a special treat. Um, and it's going to be Luke from the Voyager team with us today. And he's going to tell us a little bit more about what to expect um, with the game. And we have our very own Sinister that actually got a chance to play the game on Tuesday. So he's going to talk a little bit about that. And uh, yeah, so I'm super excited for the 23rd to come. And with that being said, let's bring everyone on. Come on in. Hi, Luke, Jason, and Mark. Luke, good to see you, man. Hey, good to see you, Oh, Jason. no. Your audio is broken again. Paul, you were supposed to unmute me. You no, know, you're, 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 I can hear you. It's just really, really, really uh, scratchy. Really? Yeah. I'm not, not sure what's up with that. Curious. That is unfortunate. Um, yeah, I didn't change anything from the setup. There we go. Now, now, now that's working. That sounds good. Okay, great. Anyway, good to see you again, man. Yeah, good to see you, Jason. Sinister, do you want to go by Sinister or Paul for the context of this uh, session here? Uh, you, you can call me Mark. That's good. Okay, perfect. Well, let's, so uh, I, let's take it away, guys. Go oh, ahead, yeah, Mark. I did. I did get a chance to play Voyager the other day, and it's been a great experience. Um, I'm not privy to this type of game because typically the space games are very different from Voyager. Um, the openness of space is a little intimidating, but generally being confined within the space of the map in Voyager, Voyager felt great. And it's very interesting how different gameplay supply and how different, um, how different those, um, um end up displaying on the performance right because i was playing it more of an more as an fps uh than the six direction flyer but we did have uh jordan playing with me and he was playing it uh the way it was intended to and it's been a great experience this far and we're really looking forward to multiplayer we're definitely going to pick the game up for another stream yeah for sure and you hit on the key point about Voyager being in these, you know, underground caverns, this tight combat makes it feel almost like a melee kind of game. You know, you really, it brings that, that intimacy of the fight really close. You're right with a lot of space games, your enemies are like way over there and you shoot and maybe you think <laughs> you're hitting them or not this, you know, the, it's, the, it's a very up close and personal. It's one of it's. I mean, this is this is the the let's call it the spiritual successor of one of my favorite games of all time that I spent hundreds of hours playing as as a teen. And so for me, that that really really tight, uh, you know, tunnel fighting action, um, you know, where you're you're, it's like uh, almost brass knuckles and knives, uh, but in spaceships, um, you know, in the dark, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, um, the, the gameplay mechanics are just so tight and just, you know, we, we didn't mess with that formula of fly fast, blow shit up and, you know, get the hell out of Dodge before everything goes to hell, you know. Can I, can I ask some totally off the map questions here? Uh, absolutely. I love uh, this. I, I, and, and and so I always feel that, uh, you know, interviews and conversations like this are better if they're just interviews and conversations, um, mm -hmm. not not like, you know, some sort of pre-scripted thing. Um, so one of the things that I've, I think that is uniquely cool about this is, is 
there could at some point in time in the future, if you guys chose to, uh, to, to be a, a pretty cool UGC user generated content um, angle here in terms of maps and, and uh, you know, battles and things like that. Is that something that you guys have thought about at all? We've definitely thought about it. I think our approach is, you know, we got a lot of enthusiasm like yourself, Jason, for this game because it yeah. is a spiritual successor to that just classic zero G six off fast paced shooter, adrenaline fueled action. And, um, you know, we really wanted to, you know, get it out on Gala, partner with you all. Your enthusiasm for it really helped, you know, kind of fuel this partnership. And then there is definitely a possibility of exploring some additional features. You know, we want it to catch on. We want players to realize how fun this game is, really get in, get hooked on it, and then... Um, you know, kind of that will be evidence for for the desire for for more uh, features and more robust uh, content. And I love UGC particularly uh, for this type of game uh, because it is just so lends itself so well to that kind of uh, Lego set creation. You know, mm -hmm. it's got very just clear, tight parameters. Um, it's not going to how should I say this, spin out into just total anarchy user-generated content where, you know. Right. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, that's, I, I would like to see that. Let's just put it that way. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, how is, uh, how do you envision in the future of this going forward, how blockchain will be leveraged? Yeah, so a couple of quick just bullet points. Um, you know, we're launching for everyone next week on April 23rd, on Tuesday. Uh, we will have a season pass available soon that uh, will allow players to unlock the rewards aspect of it. So we'll have more details on that coming soon. Gala was just wonderful to work with in exploring those possibilities and setting up the functionality there. It's been really seamless integrating uh, with the platform. Uh, I don't have too many details on that right now, but the good news is if you want to win a season pass, all you have to do is uh, follow Reflect. We are the, the publisher and um, follow us on social media or join our Discord. And we're, our marketing department is very passionate about doing these, uh, these little contests and giveaways. So make sure you get on that. Awesome, man. Um, let's see here. Any other questions that the community has? Um, and Casey, there's multiple, uh, there's multiple people here that, uh, that are, are involved in interviews and things like that. So I don't think we need to go calling people stupid for, you know, having a different person, <laughs> um, on the, it, it, people are so silly sometimes. I, I don't um, even see the comments. So uh, no, no, no. It's it's okay because it, I, I interviewed I interviewed Tony at um at GDC, uh, and and so people are like, this isn't the same person. What is this? this? Is Tony? It's just this is not the, this doesn't even look like the same guy. What the hell? We it's want like, yeah, Tony. This, yeah, we only one person has involved in this entire project, guys. Just one. Yeah, people. Are, no, I people think Tony's gonna. Out. Tony was busy, so he's gonna be on tomorrow. I believe we have another thing going on. So yes, we do. We have that Twitter space tomorrow morning or X space tomorrow morning, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Tony um, will be on for that one. Now, what was? And this is a question from Subspace, who always has good questions. Uh, what was your experience using the Gala Chain SDK? Yeah, it was great working with the Gala team. Um, they were just so. I, I want to lead with this. So they were just generally great humans to work with. And I think it's important in the game industry to recognize, like, it makes such a difference, you know, to we work really hard and, and people put sometimes too much premium on the hustle. But there is a way to hustle and, you know, maintain your humanity through the process. And they were just great. Um, the, the, really... the chain team is really, really fantastic. I know some of the, the guys that you were working with very, very well, and I'm glad that, that, uh, they were able to help you through uh, yeah. this entire journey. Yeah, they really were super responsive and, you know, the steps that they're all taking to, 
um, you know, make the creator portal more self-serve, you know, hearing our requests for suggestions and things like that, um, you know, uh, letting full transparency on the roadmap, you know, on what can and can't be done and when, and it was just, it was really great. Our developers um, at uh, Refactor Games were just great. They just jumped right in. They made sense of the documentation and just, were just running with it within like a week, basically. Well, that's, that, that makes me very, very happy to hear because uh, it's, 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 a challenge in this space to build and release things that are easy for people to use. Um, you guys are obviously far more technical than the average person, but still knowing that what we've got is better and easier to work with than other blockchain structures out there is, is fantastic. The other key difference is that, you know, y'all understand games and at this intersection of web three with blockchain and games, the systems, there's this, you know, this dovetail gray area mm -hmm. in the middle where they have to really complement each other. And if you don't have really rich knowledge and experience of both, both, yeah, yeah, then it can suffer. So that was just really great and refreshing. We were like, okay, they speak our language. These are our people, you know. And I think, you know, this is something that I've been super excited about for a long time when I first talked to Les about it, uh, you know, back some time ago. Um, I, I love this game. I absolutely love this game. I can't wait to stream it. Um, you know, I can't do that when I'm not here at home in my setup. So you may have to wait for a little bit until I, I am able to. Um, but I promise there will be some, uh, very, very extensive streaming sessions of me. Uh, although I have to say, I've noticed as a, as a father of two, uh, little children, um, I'm not as good at spinning around repeatedly as I used to be like 20 <laughs> years ago. Um, and so I'm I'm not quite entirely clear how my brain is going to handle the, you know, the this thing that you uh, kind of get into in there. Um, well, it's not just you. It, it takes, a mo well, it took me a moment to readjust after doing a barrel roll. And I would just literally sit like this, or I'd give me a moment before. <laughs> but um, it's been a good experience. Will Will there be any uh, any VR integration at some point in time in the future? Just it's in case possible. you really want to get on the vomit comet. Yeah, if you really <laughs> want to just mess with your vestibular system, um, it's possible. We're you know, and looking at our feature set, uh, it is definitely doable. Um, we're not supporting that right out of the gate, but it is. Um, it is fully set up for it. If um, again, we're kind of taking the approach of let's get it out, let's get in players' right. hands, see what the reaction is. If you know the fans are just like, I gotta try this in VR, then yeah, that that further helps. Um, you know, us. Uh, I think I think that would be that would be a hilarious, a hilarious uh, stream like viral feature of watching gamers in their in their 40s play the game that they had played previously or the the spiritual successor to the game that they spent a bunch of time in their teens playing uh just to see if their bodies and minds still handle it the way that it did back then yeah um exactly. i tried to do uh i tried to do subnautica on vr not that long ago and uh i, I managed to do that for about half an hour 45 minutes Yep. And then I had I had to go like have a, have a serious uh, lie down because it was uh, it was a little much. That's, um, that's about the limit. That's about thirty minutes, you know, of, of an intense <laughs> session. Yeah, like I can't do it anymore. I just can't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm trying so hard. Um, Broom would like to know what engine was the game built in? If that's a, a thing that you can share. Yeah, yeah, totally. It was built in Unity. And, uh, you know, after we licensed the game, we quickly realized that we we're going to need to upgrade it. So we upgraded to Unity 2021, I believe. So, yeah, to take advantage of all the new modern whiz-bang systems. And that's a great segue to multiplayer. Uh, multiplayer will be coming next after the game is live for a bit right now. Um, sorry. On the 23rd, you'll be able to play the campaign, the full campaign mode. Uh, and so the... And the challenge mode, so you can get in and play, you know, a timed round or infinite, however many bots you can kill before you die or within five minutes. Um, that'll be on the leaderboards as well, so you can uh, smack talk to your friends and then um, 
you know, beat their score there. Um, we have a new story. This is um, effectively a, you know, continuation of the previous lore uh, mm-hmm. or an alternate timeline, depending on, you know, which uh, alternate ending we got in the previous game. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we put a lot of, you know, topics in there like AI, uh, you know, sentience, um, you know, AI run amok kind of, you know, looking at the, 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 what we're experiencing now in our current era of AI evolution and completely rampant, unchecked security, you know, kind of a cautionary tale. What can happen if you're not careful, you know? Um, and then just, yeah, just evil, um, you know, sentient forces coming in and, and making people uh, a little bit of a black mirror, you know, slant on near future technology and people making really poor decisions <laughs> with that technology. Yeah. Yeah. Part yeah. for the course. Yeah. yeah it's, more I mean, it's... On uh, multiplayer coming soon though. That'll, that'll be coming shortly on the heels of the, of the launch. Awesome. Are there any plans on expanding on the challenge mode? Because right now the game feels like it has really good bones to become a fully fledged roguelite. And I feel like there is a niche right now for a six directional shooter roguelite. Yeah. I would love to see that. And, um, you know, the, the core mechanics do definitely lend themselves to uh, expansion. So, again, we're going to take our lead from the, the community and the fan base. So, yeah, I would love to hear people um, people uh, people's enthusiasm for those types of things on our Discord. Um, I'm starting a petition right now. Hang on. Perfect. I love that. That makes my job as a producer much easier. Um. Well, guys, uh, thank you, thank you very much, Luke. Is there anything else that you'd like to? Uh, any other points that we need to hit? Uh, no, I think we covered everything. Those are the big ones. Um, it's going to be great. Looking forward to having everybody come in next Tuesday and check it out. I'm so bummed that I'm not going to be able to get in and play with everybody on on Tuesday. I will I will be in Thailand at the at the time for uh, the Southeast Asian Blockchain Week. So. I'm, I'm going to miss that unless, unless I can take over a computer on the floor of Southeast Asian Blockchain Week and play. I think I'm going to try to do that. I'm going to try to do that. Okay, guys. Yeah, make it happen, Jason. I'm going to I'm going to make it happen. Um, awesome. And so, oh yeah, subspace wants deformable environments. What was the What was the name of that? Oh man, it was like red red something like there was no no there was there was a oh man there's this game that you played a uh you played like a miner on mars and it was red something i i I swear it had red was it like Um, a destructible voxel type technology thing no red red faction matthew taverner Oh, red, it. It red, red faction. I loved that game, and I loved the deformable environments. I blew everything up. Yeah. Um. And they also had a they also had a pistol that was like insanely stupidly accurate. Like if you could if you could do like that one pixel snipe, you could get like a, a shot from like two hundred yards with a freaking pistol. It was ridiculous. There was a game called Teardown that had the voxel based, you know, destructibles and you could destroy everything, just buildings by running tractors through it and everything. And it was just so satisfying. It was like therapy, you know. <laughs> I love it. And Hogzilla, Hogzilla has joined us in the YouTube chat. So this is this is Luke uh, from Voyager, uh, but we're talking about deformable territory and so we sort of got sidetracked you know, red faction anyway luke thank you so much man for coming and hanging out with us i really appreciate it um i can't wait to uh play the game and get in there with everybody else this is something that is near and dear to my heart uh and i as as the the first sort of independent uh third party and actually i want to i want to back up a tiny bit mm-hmm. um and this is this is more for the the edification of the community because Anita said something when uh, she was announcing this is that you guys are the first third party game on Galachain. That's not quite true. There's a bunch of third party games on Galachain. There's a lot of games that are created by all sorts of other companies that are on Galachain. But you're the first third party game on Galachain that wasn't us reaching out and saying, "Hey, come build a thing." 
mm. and here take some money so you guys are the first like in fully independent there is no like um there is no a minimum guarantee attached to this this is just us building something cool together which i absolutely am stoked about and i i love this and i can't wait to see where this goes and i know there's going to be a lot more in the future like this yeah absolutely i think this started with you and les at a trade show after hours just geeking it, out uh, it did it did let les and i have had a long long here series of uh and i'm sure he's listening to this right now and he's probably gonna be messaging me long series up. of uh of conversations back and forth with one another um you know and and he, at various points in time he got kind of like stuck in various other parts of the organization but he is now working directly closely with me on things and we've got more stuff to push through so i'm super yeah. stoked about this sam psyched out of my mind for this game it's just it's so satisfying and that's that's just the best thing that's what gamers want is the feeling you know that's yeah. that's it's this has got it it's got the right amount of challenge it's got the right amount of skill you get in there and you start realizing you get punished and you're like no i really have to strategize and think about my weapon switching and launch some falcons before i go charging in you know it's just it's all it's dude i i can't wait i i played that game so many late nights so many late nights with my my headphones on hiding in my bedroom uh so nobody my my parents would you know i wasn't allowed to play computer games late at night you know because obviously but you know reasons. yeah reasons reasons so here we are. Thank you, Luke. I appreciate it. And uh, we will catch up with you soon. And uh, I, I will talk to Tony tomorrow on the uh, Twitter space or X space. And uh, we'll go from there. Perfect. Thanks so much. This was really a, a pleasure. Thanks, man. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. All right. So thank you guys so much for coming on. It was uh, it was really nice to have guests. So thank you, Sinister, Jason, and Luke for that. All right. So again, I'm super excited to play. And uh, when I watched Mark play, I was like, oh, this reminds me of Star Fox and like the end of Kirby, you know, and I, I just really wanted to play. So I'm excited for it to come out. And uh, you guys don't forget to join X Spaces tomorrow, 10 a.m. Pacific time, okay? So we will see you guys there. So moving on, we have Champions Arena. And guess what, you guys? Did you know that you can own your own pets in Champions Arena? Like, surprise, because now you can, because uh, Champions Arena now has random boxes that contain pets and exclusive avatar skins. Ooh, so let's check it out. So how cute are those pets? And seriously, the avatar skins, they're actually super cute too. So I think um, that was, you know, something they're doing for spring, summer, super cute. So let's talk about them. So there's gonna be a thousand of these boxes available and the cost is $110. Now the sale goes on from April 15th to May 3rd. Um, now with these pets, let's talk about their functionality. Um, so your rares are going to get a bonus of 0.6% victory points. Epics boost your victory points by 1% and legendaries. You'll get a 2% bonus victory points plus stats, but that depends on, you know, the pet that you pull from the box and these stats will either be speed, critical rate, or life drain rate. So Teddy is actually going to give you the 10% critical power boost. Norman gives the boost by, sorry, gives your speed boost um, eight. Foxy gives 7% life drain and Wolfty gives reflect a 5% boost. Now, Axis also gives boost, sorry, Axis gives a dodge boost by 5%. So all of this sounds pretty darn cool to me. So yay, pets for the assist. Now, now that we know about the pets, let's talk about the skins. 
so with the skins, um, there's a limited quantity available and these you can only ever get from these boxes so you'll never get them anywhere else so get them they are limited editions okay so um all of them have their own individual stat boosts and it just depends on if it's the male or the female skin so like your swimsuits if it's the male or female or you know the uniforms if it's a male or female all stat boosts are a little different so get in there get your skins and get your pets super cute so the other thing we have going on for Champions of Arena is um, the Nexus Update Celebration Champions Giveaway. So yay to giveaway. Now this goes on from, again, April 12th to uh, April 25th. So if you guys haven't entered already, make your way over to our Discord. Click on the Champions Arena Announcements channel, and then you'll see the Nexus Update Celebration Champions giveaway. Now, go to that link that's provided there, enter your name, email address, and confirm the rules of agreement. Now, to participate, obviously, you're going to need a Champions Arena account. Participate in the Champions Arenas at least once during the event, and you're going to need your Champions Arena user ID. Now, share champions arena okay and you're gonna get extra points and to the participant that has the most points obviously you're gonna be the winner so get those points now how do you get entry points go to champions arena and follow them on x okay follow gala on x share it all on x repost on x okay all of um this will get you points and now if you refer to friends you're gonna get some more points so you can refer up to 9,999. Oh so make sure you guys get those referrals in. Now, the top three are going to receive a legendary NFT champion. Places four to 10 are going to receive an epic NFT champion. Places 11 to 30 are going to receive a rare NFT champion. And 31st to the 50th will receive 10,000 paid gems. Okay, so once the event wraps up, the winners are going to receive these rewards in game and make sure you provide accurate information. Okay, so if your information that you put into the form is off by a couple letters, guess what? That's not you anymore. So make sure everything is accurate because if it's not accurate, we're going to take it and be like, it's not you and you're going to get disqualified. So make sure everything you type in is correct. Okay. So if the scores are tied with any of these points, it's going to be settled by who has played more in the arena. So that's going to give them a higher ranking. So there's a lot happening with Champions Arena. And so, you know, get in on the excitement. If you haven't done so already, join. Join this giveaway. OK, it's super easy to get all these points and referral points or a thing. So what's there to lose? Really nothing. Right. So get in it. All right, so up next, we have Common Ground World, and the event that we have up coming up next week is Sushi Boats. So the meta is out. Event details can be found in the Common Ground World announcements channel. So with that being said, what is the next NFT sale? And... Well, I can't hear your guesses, so I'll tell you anyways. And it's going to be the legendary Sakura Gourmet. And so this is an NFT version of the sushi restaurant. Now, the Sakura Gourmet has three chefs, and it gives you um, a global crafting speed to salmon and eel of 50%. Now, please keep in mind that this is not stackable, okay? And as per usual, May Mayhem is coming up. Now, as for the rewards and all that fun stuff, stay tuned because those will be announced soon. All right. So remember tomorrow's town hall. It's going to be at the same time, 8 a.m. Pacific. And that's going to be on our Discord. And you can totally stream it in uh, YouTube and all of the other places as well. Now, the question form to make sure you get your questions in is still in the same place in our Discord. So make sure you get those questions in. If you don't get the questions in, we're not going to answer your questions. So get them to us. All right. So up next, we have Last Expedition. And we will bring Jason on for this.
Um, I don't know if I get the above shoulder thing. Maybe we're not configured for that right now since I just kind of yeeted myself in here for last expedition. Um, so the last expedition team is uh, busy and hard at work creating awesome new stuff. And so we have a little tiny leak to show you guys. Uh, there we go. Now I get to have my nice little uh, top thing. Oh, crap. Wrong direction. Um, so let's run the video, Paul. Now, how freaking cool is that, right? Now, some of that you've seen before, okay? But it doesn't make it any less badass. I absolutely love it, and I get totally pumped every time I see any of this. Um, however, uh, there's a newly created teaser from the team, uh, from the latest build for the game, uh, that shows some of the uh, new in-game uh, graphics and latest additions. Let's go ahead and run that one. freaking love it i absolutely love everything that that has has come out of that um the team always does such a freaking incredible job those videos are absolutely fire and i love the game um and i i love uh all of the the additional work that's going into that and you know all of the various scaling things that are happening Okay, there is going to be some uh, rewards issued based on today's leaderboard stats. This will be the last time we're doing this as we're giving the team time for an upcoming mega release. Uh, the top 10 players have collectively obliterated over 95,000 creatures uh, and emerged victorious in nearly 900 pulse pounding matches. As a token of appreciation for your dedication, we're preparing something special for our esteemed top 10 champions. Stay tuned for more information next week. Now, I also uh, threw myself into this, and we're going to move on to the next piece here with the uh, NFTD, Non-Fungible -fung Tower Defense. Um, I went ahead and kind of hijacked this section because I spent a lot of time talking to these gentlemen, um, and I believe I'm even eating, meeting one of them for, uh, for lunch uh, this weekend. Um, but this is, uh, with all of the excitement about the third-party games that are coming to Gala, we don't want to forget Non-Fungible Tower Defense, uh, NFTD. The NFTD team was one of the winning teams in the Gala Chain Hackathon. Um, they won the grand prize uh, at GDC, so congratulations to them. And our very own Sinister sat down with two members of the team and had a chat. Uh, with uh, Timbo Slice and Cryptogram from the team earlier this week. Let's go ahead and play that good, Paul. Um, and this could be a about 20, 24 minute interview. Um, and then we have a bunch of other updates that you guys are gonna wanna see as well as a whole bunch of stuff uh, from me talking about some of the questions that everybody has been curious about. So um, go ahead and run that video, Paul, and we'll see you guys in a few. Hello, hello, everyone. Today with me, I have Timbo Slice and Cryptogram. Uh, the guys, you already know them. Everyone knows them. They're building an FTD. How are you guys feeling today? What's going on? Doing good, good. man. Okay. Good yeah, to have you on. 
Good to have you on. Super excited about the game. Really looking forward to it. I'm personally a huge fan of the tower defense genre. Something about um, something about just absolutely smoking waves of <laughs> waves of upcoming monsters is very satisfying to me. Really looking forward <clears throat> to the game. So, um, where's the game right now? What have you guys been up to? Yeah, man. So since the since the hackathon, uh, the playtest is is similar. Um, we're going to get another play test out soon. New prizes, got some Blue Realm NFT prizes, uh, implementing the, the beatbox tower as well for, for the Snoop uh, open stash boxes. So we're going to get that play test out and, and slowly build it, um, you know, I'd each say week over time. We're pretty early still in development. Um, I'd say right now it's basically in an alpha stage. And we really want that player feedback just to make sure we're like checking all the boxes to make sure it's fun. Fun's kind of our main motivator. Um, and then, of course, adding all the different NFTs and making sure it works at scale. So, and then, um, like as Tim was mentioning, we got these different towers in the game. Right now, it's the arcade style. It's very focused on that, uh, you protecting your base against all the incoming waves, and the waves get stronger every single, uh, I guess, wave. But what we're focused on next is really just expanding out the universe because there's so many different styles of tower defense games. Like you have the classic path walking ones, you have, uh, the waves and now there's like new versions that have more of the roguelike elements. So we're definitely going to build towards that over time. So there's, there's lots to do, but I think what's up there right now is, is pretty strong. Yeah. I that think the, the, the good way to categorize what we have now is an arcade style tower defense. Yes. Right. And, and we want to build it out. We have a grand vision, so it'll be awesome to see it slowly uh, grow. I'm a big fan of our arcade game solely for replayability. And I know you just brought up the, roguelite factor have you guys uh given a lot of thought to that uh what that might look like i'd say only recently i mean um like tim and i were talking probably last week about this game that we just saw come out um it was called north what's it called tim north north, north end tower defense yeah. north end tower defense yeah so it's like a world war ii style game uh tower defense 3d graphics um and they have two modes they have like the wave mode which is more of like the the classic version for them. And then they have this new zombie style mode, which has the roguelike elements. So basically every wave comes through. Once you finish a wave, you get presented a little option to either have a health perk update or uh, more ranged attacks for your, your, your towers or some, some other like in-game like artillery fire or something like that. And so I think that's very interesting. I think now I think we're probably going to add, add elements of that into it. Yeah. It, it meshes well with the style we have now, right? The wave based, the, be very easy to implement options hey boost your attack boost your defense boost your healing on your you know blue realms or oh, yeah. or bt or uh, tower or something like that so yeah it was it's a uh, definitely a good possible route to go and that actually sounds really good and uh, more and more in the industry even the industry titans um everyone is starting to adapt robot elements and it's been adapted to like every single genre at this point like even hitman has a roguelite mode now mm -hmm. uh so really excited about what's to come and um in case y'all didn't hear it i'm gonna repeat it again there's gonna be a play test and this one is gonna be with prizes so make sure to stay tuned do not miss that and can we talk a little more about the grand vision what the end results you would like to look like definitely yep. Um, I guess there's two sides. So I'll talk more about the tech side. I'm sure Tim will talk more about like the, the ethos of the, the game. On the tech side, um, right now what you're seeing is it's the arcade. Oops. You you have the center tower, and that's the one you're supposed to protect from all the incoming waves. It's I'd say it's very basic. We're going for this retro style feel, which is really cool. Um, but we definitely have bigger visions for where it's going to go. So one aspect I really want to go in towards is more a 3D game versus a 2D. 2D is a lot of challenges around like overlaying sprites. Um, when you do like blast effects and like even trying to target um, an enemy with a, with an arc for your your uh, like let's say an arrow arc, that's hard to do in two D because it's a flat plane surface. So I kind of want to take into a three D plane, add a grid um, that has more like not to make a blocky. So you're like not like like um, in um, oh what's that game called? Oh my goodness, I was going to say Town Star, but I really shouldn't call it that. It, in Common Ground World, Common where ground you have world. Um, the the uh, towers you can place or, or the, the buildings you can place like that, where it's a little bit uh, blocky, but not too blocky. 
there's better words for this. I apologize, <laughs> but you get the idea. Basically tile base that also opens up ability to add more data into the tile. So then I can, we can place down walls and have the walls all connect to each other. We can make sure the enemies can see those walls and the pathfinding to make sure they're going the right way around. So just, it just opens up a whole other realm. And then 3d effects are just, in my opinion, better to do or easier to do for us than a 2d. Cause you need more of like uh, experience with like the 2d um, shaders and, yeah. and like all the different animations that are required for that kind of stuff. So 3d is the first thing we're going to do. Um, we're also going to add in, um, a server authoritative in terms of the design right now, it's very much a client side game. So, uh, the client controls all the waves as we start to add more and more high value prizes. And uh, eventually, once we add um, like cryptocurrency in there that you can earn, we're going to have to, or, or like tokens to earn, we're going to have to lock it down a little bit more because we're going to have people come and try to hack the environment. So uh, we, we've already started the project to move it more server authoritative. So that's also on the way from that, the different game modes we want to support. So we have the classic wave based all in one right now. We do want to also add in the more classical uh, pathfinding ones, where basically your your guys go across the board, or the bad guys go across the path, and then you put towers in very strategic spots. For that one, it's probably going to be more like a level base. So you're going to have like level one as like a entry into the game, then level two, level three, level four. So different maps that'll be more consistent. And then Tim and I have talked about this. Well, I don't I don't want to spoil the big thing, so I'm not I'm going to fully not talk about it. But the thing we're going to do is basically some sort of PvP element where you'll be able to build up your base, build up troops or, or armies, and then go attack someone else, kind of like a Clash of Clans style approach. So that's like really the, the arc that I'm taking the game from like just technical build. Uh, but Tim will talk more about the. Oh man, I can already, I can already see people selling their um, their designs with the towers and where to place them. Yep. You already feel that. Right, so, which yeah. perfectly leads into what, like, there's the tech side, there's the stuff that us as an internal team have to build, right? But then a big part of this is the community aspect that we, we want to build into the game through the GG Collective DAO, where the DAO has an integral part in kind of in working beside us. And, you know, let's say we, when a new tower wants to be implemented, we let the community vote on what tower they want to get. You know, oh, I, w I would rather have the Curry Shoes NFT turn into a basketball, t uh, a tower that shoots basketballs, than I would have a uh, another Town Star NFT, right? And let the community vote on what towers get put in, which means the community gets to essentially control the meta in a way. Um, and then we'll have our, you know, we'll build out our, our roadmap of what we want to uh, accomplish as a team, but you know, make sure the community has things that they can vote on along the way to help make it what they want. A perfect example is, you know, in our in in our discord that we've, we've been talking to the community on certain aspects that we want to change in the game. You know, we want the community to uh, get what they want type of thing. They they're as a gamer myself. We're really good at finding problems, right? We're really good at game theorying things out, finding exploits, finding the best way, especially when prizes are involved. We're kind of the best hackers in a way. We'll hack your numbers on on your metas and and exploit the the crap out of it. So, um, letting empowering the community and finding ways to reward them for helping that, like that's what we're trying to do with the GG Collective and and uh, kind of build a game with the community. I'm getting super excited just hearing about this. I didn't even think about how each independent NFT could work in the game, but seeing Curry Shoes flinging basketballs that would bounce between enemies. Yeah, plus one to that. Sold. They will yeah, be bouncing. I am sold. Exactly. Yeah, I'm sold. No doubt. Cool. I love it. And honestly, at this point, it feels like um, the perfect the perfect tower defense games. Uh, game solely because it, it it encompasses a lot of what people would generally want out of a game and seeing a variety of different game modes is great just because as of now if i do want to switch between these game modes that means i need to entirely switch from one game to another so having everything in one place sounds like a really good idea for sure yeah I mean, that's kind of what we're building towards is having all the different modes in play. But what's cooler than I think just even the play modes, it's also your NFTs are in play too. 
So if you have NFTs across different projects, you'll be able to use those inside of our game. So that's that's one of the coolest thing I think about this project and why I think like Tim and I really just like meld well or together is just because we want to build this world where we can play with our toys, right? These are our NFTs. I have curry shoes. I've been waiting forever for them to be put. Dude, in we've got a we've gotten attached to these things, man. They're ours. Yeah. And I've I'm attached to my 380 Blue Realm NFTs, okay? That I have to <laughs> man, I feel it. Too many. Way too many. I feel hey. it. Honestly, I've been considering buying one of those di digital frames just to display mm. my NFTs. I have one somewhere. It is worth oh. it. I, I do like mine. Yeah. All right. I'm I'm picking one up after this. Yeah. And have you considered using these NFTs as um, not only as towers but also as enemies? Because I think it would be really cool to have a Ravager come out and like grab one yes, of your towers. Would. Yep, totally. And like I don't know, Tim. Again, I might just start to leak all the things that we're talking about. <laughs> Honestly, the sorry, matter, look, the hey, no, look, we have I, we have ideas. We have so yeah. many ideas that so it's many. just who who's going to build it now? <laughs> so, exactly. So you can leak the, anything you want, honestly. I don't, all right, I'll start yeah. leaking, and we'll see. It's really based on what the community wants, right? Because the exactly, community will vote right? in exactly what we do, and that's what's kind of the yeah. power of, of the team. But one of the things we're thinking of is that if you have some of these these NFTs, so even like, let's go with, you said Ravengers. Ravengers or even Fuzzles or Vox. So if you are building a base, and once we add in the PvP mode, you'll be able to uh, use those as troops to then bring to other people's bases and actually attack their bases to steal their, their resources. So if you have a Ravenger, that's going to be a very high value um, asset to use when you go to attack someone else's base. Right. You can also use talked, the, yeah. Or in the, the separation between enemies and ally troops, right? So like some like Voxes, Exemplars, like character NFTs can all of a sudden become your troops. And then depending on the different game modes, like like uh right the current one we have now maybe uh, you know the ravager just increases the the enemy capabilities right like stuff like that so yeah i think uh the characters are gonna be sick and in, in yeah. getting really what that does too is it it gives us a our plan is you know everything will be in the art of the nft the universe right so it'll have its own art style what that will do is allow us to bring in character nfts from around the the web3 metaverse in, in general and we can rapidly bring in new nfts and just connect it through through web3 um that's the goal obviously so and then having the community vote on which which nfts is implemented will be huge it'll be pudgy penguins we'll get them in there <laughs> in board apes and yeah. <laughs> I'm getting excited just thinking about the complexity. I am so ready to bust out all the spreadsheets and start documenting everything. Um, the PVP aspect is very exciting because thinking back to the days of uh, Warcraft 3 custom games, Legion TD was very big. Uh, very much not a traditional tower defense because as opposed to uh, placing down towers, you place down units and you want to make sure that these units have... Um, different abilities to compensate each other, different mm -hmm. damage types, different buffs, et cetera, et cetera. So I can already see how that would translate and how that would work in NFTD. Yeah, sure. It's getting what complicated I've got. already. Like, let's be honest, we already have some spreadsheets going with the meta we have now. <laughs> so it's definitely going to be a little more complicated once we start adding in the troops and like troop management, different types of, and, and there's such a variety of potential NFTs out there that you can pull from, right? So like, what's the, the attack uh, power of a, a pudgy penguin versus the ravenger obviously a lot less but right maybe more health i don't know. i mean it's gotten my head spinning for for so long because i get i came into the space definitely with the ready player one like mindset right like oh let's bring all of our to like all the things we've collected throughout the universe right which is what the web3 metaverse we can bring them all into one world We've been sold, sold. I've been sold on that for a long time. And so the idea of like, we have a leader, a, a tower defense game with a leaderboard where maybe the one, the number one player has this unique build of all these different NFTs they've brought in. And then the number two player has the complete opposite, just not a single one of the same NFTs. I, and, and seeing all these different metas that are built, I think it, it gets me, gets me excited. This has proven to be one of the more difficult um, things to do and execute properly throughout the gaming industry, but coming up with an ecosystem that doesn't rely on these cookie cutter builds 
would be truly incredible and I'm really looking forward to it. So what are some of the things that you guys are most excited about? Uh, in the near future, something further ahead? There's a lot of things. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna nerd out, go super technical. Uh, right now we're talking with uh, a, a company called NerdNode um, to get our app put on their ecosystem so that the app can be fully run decentrally. So we're gonna have the server authoritative approach. So we'll have a server and a client build for the game, but it's gonna be run wherever the nodes sit in people's houses or, or really around the world. And that's going to really help our server costs, first of all. So I don't have to pay for all of that, which would be great. <laughs> but it really makes it decentralized. So if you have the game there, and let's say we shut down our central server, the game will still run because they'll have the files on their on their nodes. And I think that's something I've always wanted to be able to do is just like build this thing that just grows by itself. Um, so I'm super excited to start working on that guy. That is very exciting, and I think um, the value is often misunderstood. Uh, so if you allow me, I'll go a little bit into, um, well, I'll get on my soapbox here for a minute. Uh, with Warcraft 3 and the game being so old, there were a lot of challenges for the players because there weren't updates for a long time, for mm -hmm. example, or it was always possible that the server support would die out and... Um, it presents a lot of challenges for the community to resolve. There are ways to resolve it. Not all of them are elegant. Uh, not all of them are safe. And uh, realistically, if we're looking, let's say, 10, 20 years ahead, um, and the game is no longer supported by, by the original developer, if you do give the power to the people, if you give them these nodes and uh, these super fans continue playing the game and running the nodes, the game lives on forever. And that is genuinely the most exciting thing because there are so many great games that are impossible to play at this point. Just getting them to run on Windows mm -hmm. 10 or 11 is impossible, but giving the tools to the people just uh, makes everything so much easier. Totally. And I think that's the dream is just to have your game, be like have a legacy behind it and it outlives yourself. Like that's that's kind of what I would yeah. love to, to have happen, especially with Web3. Like well, this could be one of the first games that actually does that because we're like, all the NFTs in our game, they're not our NFTs, they're other projects. Like there's nothing there that's that's like we have, well, we've created everything, but like nothing there is that we're like, in terms of ownership, it's really it's shared to begin with. So it's like shared from the start. So there's no, like nothing is required of us to go out and, and do something specific. It's really just whatever the people want us to do, we'll kind of build that way. Like, like the pull effect, right? The market pull, we'll go that way. Yeah. Okay, it's good to hear. and. This really is a good space for this because it's typically difficult to um, to zero in on a community that would be interested in um, in participating to this extent. So, Timbo, what do you have for me? I think kind of along the same lines. I I think I'm I'm most excited to to do something that hasn't been done before, right? Like that's I've kind of been searching for that with with our team. Like what. There's all these spaces that, and I mean, Web3 ethos in general was that, like, let's, was creating something that hadn't been created before. This a decentralized uh, blockchain ledger, like, awesome. It's it's nothing that hasn't been done. Now the D-pin is huge. Like, if we can figure out the, the decentralized physical infrastructure and getting our game to run on that, okay, that's, that's amazing. That is super exciting. So I agree with with graham on that too and then doing the inner the interoperability play like can we do it because people have talked about how hard it is for so long like but but it is the thing that everybody wants we want the ready player one world we've we were sold on that that dream and so figuring out a way for us to do that excites me it's hard right like i'm not we're completely aware that like we can have the grand altruistic vision but it's not that easy if everybody else like so many other people have tried to do it they put a lot of money and effort into it and they're not dumb like it's hard so we know that there's going to be roadblocks but we're excited to 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 see if we can do it and we think we've done it right we've built it right with the community centric uh you know the community ha has is in the driver's seat i think we can get there and, and see see what happens yeah very excited um, so one of the challenges I think that will be interesting 
to see how you navigate is balancing. Generally, because there is just too much going on and too many, per the perfect scenario is having all of the NFTs on. So I'm curious to see if you have any thoughts on that. Yes. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. Lots of, well, I'll go first. Um, so yeah, I mean, we've definitely talked about it. We, I say we're still going to fine tune. We'll, we'll be fine tuning all the way through. We'll never stop. Even like this next play test, we've gone back and forth four or five times in some of the power of, of the buildings of the cannon tower versus the arrow tower. Uh, and I've, I've tried to down tune some things. So I think it's just a fine tune that we get in place for the buildings we have. And that as soon as we add a new thing to it, it's going to shift the, the balance again. And we're going to have to fine tune it again. So I think it's really just closely or, or listening closely to to the customers and to the to the players of the game and just really taking their feedback in so if they're like hey i'm high on the leaderboard and i'm using level one um towers or, or the the yeah the, the level one fortitude tower um if i have the level two tower that probably should be more powerful than level one so really i should skew the balance that way either in the cost of the building or the power of the building so i think it's going to be it's the challenge right that's the problem with or not the problem that's that's what happened with um common ground world is that they had a lot of balancing problems early on. And now there's so many NFTs in that game. And I think they figured out a way to make the meta work and it does change every single week. So I'm also nervous around changing it too much and having like the squeakiest customer, not customers, the squeakiest player getting, getting what they want out of the game, like for their NFTs that they have that are powered. So I, I just want to make sure this balance. So yeah. the answer I guess is more like, I, we're gonna have to really listen and make changes and be okay to make changes to, to some of the, the dynamics. Yeah. Go ahead, Tim. And I think the way we, we get ahead of that is exactly with the model that we're doing, right? It's it was it's every tower eventually we'll get to a point where every tower that comes in the game was the community's choice, right? They're intricately involved. They know that they're involved. Like if if we we're not we're not gonna release a tower and an o overpowered tower and then sell it. Right. No, we would release a tower. And if it's overpowered, it is by accident. Right. And then the community had like we the community knows we're going to work with them on uh, making sure that it's right so that the meta is always, you know, is what the customers want. Um, so really just kind of the, the, the narrative behind it, like we're in this together. We know we want to do something extremely hard. And, and that is a, a clear cut problem that will there will be there every game has it in their own way let's work together and, and and get it get it right so glad to hear it um it's very encouraging to hear you guys so ready to tackle on these challenges and even more encouraging to know that you understand what those challenges are going to be <clears throat> uh, again i am very excited to see uh what the next steps are going to be i am personally looking forward to the play test um, I know we haven't set a date and I'm not going to pressure you for it, right? <laughs> It'll be soon. <laughs> soon. I'll take it. Soon. I'll take it. Um, is there anything else we should be looking out for? Anything we should be waiting for? Well, the, the GG Collective um, DAO first round of raising or of funding is live on, on Seed Starter right now. Um, and, you know, if when you invest in that, you'll get GG token. And as a GG token holder, you will get to be a part of, of uh, determining the path of NFTD um, and be directly involved with us. So I think that's that's our biggest thing. So the rest of the, you know, rest of the year, we're just going to be working on this and updating it and, and trying to get it to where everybody loves it. All right. Sounds good. Uh, any final thoughts, you guys? Okay, doke. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to send it back to Anita. Goodbye. All right. So thank you guys so much for all of that. Oh, my goodness. I'm super excited. Super, super, super excited. I heard playtest and I was like, yay, playtest. So super excited. Um. So up next, we have Gala Game Space. Oh, no, we no, don't. Sorry. I lied. We do have another video from NFTD. I'm so sorry. <laughs> to a 
actually, this should be Anita right now. Well, wait, we have all sorts of different videos going on here. <laughs> but since it's not Anita, it'll be me. Um, so as we mentioned earlier, uh, Sinister and Dread Pirate Roberts had a very fun time playing Voyager Ascension on Tuesday. We will be streaming the game again soon uh, as it was such a blast. Got to work on the teleprompter there, guys. Um, and uh, keep an eye on the YouTube channel for our Friday streams. There may be a special stream in the works. And then next week, we'll be having a special guest or two uh, from Gala Music join our Tuesday stream. Uh, we'll let you know more details as things get confirmed. And then a little bit of an update on merch. So um, we have heard, and I've said this before, I'm going to say it again. We have heard the cries for merch. Everybody wants merch. And in fact, we have seen, uh, you, we tried to align some stuff up with the uh, hoodie for you guys. Please don't die in the background, good Paul. That was a really awful cough. Um, AIs don't cough, people. They don't have, you know, chest Can't issues. <laughs> um, and uh, so anyway, we've heard, we've, we've tried to line some stuff up with hoodies. That has proven to be... Uh, a mixed bag, I think is a nice way to put it. Some people have gotten cool hoodies. A lot of them seems to have disappeared into the ether. We're not quite sure what happened there. Um, this is the, the downside of working with uh, third parties. So we are in the process of getting a bunch of other stuff stood up and um, I'm personally going to figure out what we need to do with the hoodies that were not delivered. Um, but anyway, uh, if there's anything specific that you would like to see from merch, uh, ping Anita here or um, Anita. Chair Bandit. There we go. Or Chair Bandit. And I, wait, hold on. Can I? Can I yep, that's the one. Oh, I can, that, mm -hmm. that one. I can, I can. Oh, wrong way. <laughs> anyway, um, is there anything else that you'd like to say, Anita, before I, I tackle gnarly now issues? Again, anything special besides, you know, the usual hoodies, T-shirts, all of that stuff. We already got it covered. So we want to hear, like, the special stuff that you guys want to see. Like, we heard the Gala Skateboard, okay? We know you want that on your wall. We hear you. Now, we want to hear all the other cool stuff that you guys want to see. I like the way that you That's said it, it, on the wall. You want the skateboard on the wall. <laughs> it's on the That's, wall. We know you guys are touching we, we grass. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, there's, no, there's no actual skating. Nobody's going to be, you know, doing sick flips. Uh, you know, with that. Um, so no, yeah, said it was specifically to hang on their wall. That's why I was like, for the wall. <laughs> okay, okay. You know what? We can, we can. I'm sure we can sort something like that out. And make it absolutely awesome. I think that that would be cool. I would love to have a wall decoration with multiple decks from each of the games. Mm -hmm. I think that that would be super cool. Um, I think that that anyway, we can do stuff. Um, and for the the uh, salty members of the community, we're going to be doing salt shakers and rugs. <laughs> um, so oh, I think I, I, we might might as well, right? I mean, might as well. Okay, let's lean lean into it. Um, okay, uh, now I'm going. I'm going to. Is there anything else, Anita? That would be it. I'm going to let you take it away. Okay, Don't like, forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell because we are out here showing you guys love. So the least you can do is show up for us. All right. Okay. Take care, Jason. Thank you, Anita. Appreciate it. Okay, guys, let's get into it. Um, there's a bunch of stuff that you guys are going to have questions about. And hold on. Give me just a minute. Good, Paul. Do you have a little bit of extra time? Um, I just want to make sure if I go a little bit over that that's not going to like ruin your evening. Okay. Because I'm going to go a little bit over cause, cause I can't do, I can't do these three topics in 15 minutes and also have an AMA section. So, um, I'm sending my wife a message, uh, going to be a little bit late finishing the stream. There we go. Um, so Let's get into it, guys. Now, the first thing that uh, we're I'm going to go ahead and dive in on directly is where did my whole thing? Because I have to read this first one word for word because it is important. Our team would like to announce some exciting news and changes that have been going on in the background of Echoes of Empire. As of last week, Ion Games and Gala are working on the terms to transition the game and IP completely over to the Gala team. What does this mean for you all? 
In the short term, nothing should change with the game or gameplay. The Gala team is in the process of creating a plan to help with ongoing support and content updates. Uh, we published a we published a roadmap a few weeks ago, and we'll be revising the items on that roadmap during this transition. We will work to update and publish a new roadmap for Echoes of Empire once this transition transition from Ion Games to Gala is completed. Uh, we want to thank the entire Ion Games team with a special shout out to Shadow and Sherpa for being such integral parts, not only of the game, but as points of contact for you, the EOE community. As part of this planned transition, Shadow and Sherpa will be departing the Discord community. As uh, uh, departing the Dif Discord community and Nephilim Haas, who many of you are pr probably familiar with from many, many other places in the Gala ecosystem, will take the lead on the EOE Discord server. That's all we can share for now, uh, but please let us know if there are any questions and we will answer them as we can at this time. Um, so this is uh, something that I'm super stoked about because I really love EOE, I love the art style, um, and I love the idea that we will be able to bring it internally and do a little bit of work and some changes on the economy and structures and things, things like that. We know that there are things that people are unhappy about with that, um, and no need to go into any of it right now, um, but we want to take a, a very... Uh, very Web3 approach to this. And, and I want it to be something that uh, people are really able to enjoy because I think the game has fantastic bones. We just need to get a really robust uh, content pipeline and tokenomic structure around it and uh, go forward from there with it. Okay, then the topics that uh, everybody has been wanting to talk about. Um, there have been some changes happening internally at Gala, and these changes right now are centering uh, in large part around the Mirandas and Tweety uh, teams and structures. Um, we're in the process of, of migrating these teams for the most part to a new Chilean studio that we have stood up and created specifically for the purposes of running live ops and expanding game content. Um, we recognize very, very much that this is a contentious decision and that a lot of members of the community are quite unhappy about this. Um, however, we want to reassure you guys that what we're doing is in the best interest of the game, is in the best interest of the community, and is in the best interest of the entire ecosystem. Now, you guys may not necessarily believe this right now, and it's going to be one of those things where I think everybody is going to pretty much be upset until we're able to demonstrate very clearly that this is something that they actually will have been happy about. Um, but the transition is going well. There are members of uh, both the Mirandas and Tweety team that are sticking around to help with this transition and, uh, you know, get things spun up. Um, in, in the case of Mirandas, there are some, some things that we are finding with the, the back end that would have uh, caused some issues, and people have highlighted this in Discord as well, not us. But, you know, there, there are definitely things to improve upon, and we are unwavering in our commitment to delivering this as something for the entire ecosystem. Now, I want to talk just a little bit about some of the leadership of the teams uh, that are standing up um, in, uh, in the Chilean studio. Um, because they have been absolutely epic and have been involved in a very, very large number of different titles. Um, you know, everything from, from Harry Potter, Hogwarts Legacy, Bioshock 4, Star Wars Galactic Defense, Hellfire the Summoning, Dungeons and Dragons, Arena 4, Pocket Forest, Fighting Hunters, DC Legends, Rainbow Six Mobile, Blood Brothers 2, NBA Clash, NFL Clash, WWE Undefeated, uh, Zed Run, a bunch of different titles. I mean, these, these are people that are highly experienced. There's even uh, the producer for uh, Academy Award winning short uh, is one of the, the, the leads over there. Um, and so what I want to drive home with this is the, the idea that uh, this does not mean these titles are abandoned. This does not mean these titles are going to be making, you know, radical, crazy shifts in directions that you guys don't want to see. And this is one of the reasons that we have asked you guys specifically what the promises you perceive to be in existence that we need to make sure that we honor. And so that's what we're working absolutely uh, very, very uh, hard on. Um, let's see, R3 Ablo, 
actually, you know what? Before we do AMA questions, I'm gonna I'm gonna do one other last thing. Okay. Um, one other last thing. Oh wait, hold on. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. If you go to the Discord, there is a link uh, in the Miranda's channel, um, in the announcements channel, for a area where you can go and you can put in what you perceive to be promises uh, that have been made in AMAs, in conversations, in you know anything that you have. What we want to do is, you know, we have our own internal list, of course, but you know we haven't been present at all of the different places where this has been discussed. So if there's a video out there somewhere that shows something being promised, we need to be able to have that and, you know, be able to to nail that down so that we can make sure that we get it on the developmental roadmap. Um, okay, let's see here. And then what is it? What are you talking about? Universal sound? Anyway, um, and then the final piece before we go into some uh, some updates, and oh, that's one of the other things, is in regards to this uh, Chilean team, uh, this is the team that, in or not the same team completely, but the same parts of leadership that have taken over uh, building Vox. Now, you guys know that Vox was in a pretty sorry state when, uh, you know, there were some some changes that were made and this new team was brought on to help build and deliver on that promise. And to just, I think earlier today, they released a V0 video of some of the stuff going on with Foxverse. So let's go ahead and run that, Paul. Oh, it's on the screen with me. Oh, sorry. I wasn't watching my screen. Anyway, so basically, long story short is, um, is it playing? It doesn't look like it's moving couple of land plots it seems very very down. still paul oh there we go okay Ooh, um <laughs> right, so, so so anyway there's a there's a lot um it has many many there was a there is a lot of uh work that is going into all of this and there's a lot of really fantastic uh team members and leadership that are are coming into all of this so uh i'm very very happy with uh the future direction of all of this and i look forward to seeing it continue to thrive okay now with all of that said now i'm going to segue into the amas and i should be around we'll do at least the next 20 minutes uh of ama questions and i'll i'll, I'll... We'll take a quick look at uh Okay, I will you know what? Paul says the video runs for another two minutes. I'm just gonna let the video run and we'll do some AMA stuff right over the top of it because I don't want to talk about Vox for another two minutes. Um okay, I'm gonna hit questions uh first. Um uh, so Mike let's say Rus. I didn't like this guy. Anymore. Um Mike Rus says out, Pablo, leader of the Chilean uh, team, mentioned he, does not have any experience uh, on MMORPG style games. Why do you think this team I mean, is qualified to take over Miranda's? Um Pablo uh, has experience in a lot of different things, and more importantly, what Pablo has experience in is running stuff. Um, it's not necessary, necessarily, that he be the person that is the vision holder for Miranda's. What is necessary is that he is able to deliver. Um, and then my hope in all of this is that the vision for all of this comes not just from a person inside, but collectively from the entire community. You guys are fantastic uh, at having a vision. You guys know what you want. And I want all of us to work on building this together because honestly, that's what it's supposed to be. It's not about me. It's not about any other single individual. It's not about Pablo. It's about all of us together. And the best way to be part of that is to, you know, collaborate as we work and build all of this together. See when they, they need to be. Um, can you mute that video, Paul? I guess it has audio. People are saying it's clashing. Um, okay, there we go. Audio is muted. Hopefully that work, uh, works brain, ma brain amazing. Um, how many devs are you aiming for, for the new Miranda's team? I don't know, but I'm quite confident it is going to be a substantial team. Um, let's see. Is Metaflora building nodes on Gala Chain? I'm not sure about that. I don't know. Um, I don't know what they've been given access to. I Weirdly, there's so much stuff going on that I'm not actually part of 
really anything that's happening um, from the external partnership perspective, unless it's something that I've personally taken an interest in. Um, and in, and that is one of those things that I'm not, uh, you know, really writing, uh, writing on. Let's see. Um, Anthony Alaman, any news on the uptick of burns that happened today? I actually just asked a question in the chat right now. Um, one second in our internal Slack. Let me see if somebody replied. I see there was a reply. Um, no, that is not in a relevant reply. I don't honestly have any idea where those burns are coming from. Um, I, as far as I know, it's not anything that we're doing. So I'm looking for, uh, I look, I'm looking for forward to finding more out about that. I will probably drop it into, uh, into the chat. Um, let's see here. What other things here? What do we have? Uh, is EOE going to the Chilean team after acquisition? Not entirely sure on that yet. Um, but, uh, it, like the, the the whole purpose of the Chilean team, guys, just so you understand the the, the initial uh, context, the purpose of the Chilean team was to scale delivery. Okay, their specialty and Pablo's specialty and all of the teams that he's run previously has been taking content that it was created uh, for for one thing and then scaling that content out, building out live services. Right, this means hosting events. Uh, doing all sorts of uh, game updates, you know, building out a full, fully fleshed out content, uh, you know, roadmap based on uh, based on whatever has been, you know, handed to them. And so the way that this was originally intended to happen is the Chilean team would be there. Various teams would hand over a like, hey, we've done this thing. OK, we've done all this work. We've built a new biome. We've built a new map. We've built a new whatever. And then the Chilean team takes that and scales it and you know builds out more of it so what we're in the process of doing right now is building out those pipelines that content delivery pipeline um it is unacceptable to have two releases a year that's crazy talk um and so a large part of this is like guys we need to push stuff out we need to push it out more quickly um, with with a great degree of alacrity and and high quality and you know that's something that is is super important to us um, and to you guys as a gaming community um, is one of the reasons why the Chilean team is taking on many of the projects is to centralize communication uh, Devkin Bob asks um, to centralize communication and to standardize. OK, one of the challenges that we've had, uh, and this is not a big surprise to anybody, is that Gala has is often existed in a uh, varying degrees of silo. So you may have two different parts of the company working on two different things, not talking to each other about it because they're in different time zones and different projects. You know, even in some cases, for example, Miranda's had its own slack. It was its own completely separate thing. Um, you know, where where discussions happened that none of the rest of the company were, were even remotely aware of. Um, and so by by basically bringing everything into a, a place where these conversations can happen in a, you know, functional manner, and there's a really clear line of like, okay, here's the strategy, here's the content, and go forth and expand from there, then that's, you know, that's that's a big part of that. Um, let's see here. How long will game development be a driver for a layer one provider? Um, you know, we, these games are things that, you know, are very important to us. I don't see gala games as a concept going away anytime soon. I see it basically becoming its own, uh, standalone thing as eventually the, the L1 and gala chain moves to, to probably some sort of, you know, in the future, who knows, but some sort of foundation like structure or something like that, where uh, as it becomes progressively more open source, other people are, are able to, you know, commit to it. And it, it becomes something where uh, we serve more of a curatorial role at the end of the day. Um, Punjab, not worried at all, rushing to release an MMORPG. We're not rushing to release an MMORPG. What we're doing is we're getting something stood up so that there can be a consistent increase of content so that there is 
you know, week over week, month over month, new content that you guys can actually play. Um, this isn't like a throw it out the door and, oh my gosh, here it is. It's all done now. Good luck. Um, that's not what this is. Um, and good, Paul, can you center me again? I'm like feeling off on the side here. Thank you. <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, how are we going to make the economy in Mirandas work without hyperinflation? I don't want to speak too much about the economy, but Mirandas was never based on a, the, the proposed economy was never based on a hyperinflationary structure. It was based on at least the proto version, which was the last one I was involved in, was based on Mirandas or uh, Materium being scattered throughout the world and there being a, you know, you go out and you collect that. Again, the key thing here for this is always it should be fun, okay? Now, there can be all sorts of interesting commercial ventures that you have as you also have fun, but the main focus, especially of an MMORPG, is the fun. Um, okay, uh, Nicholas Blevins says, thank you for reading the community proposal that was put together by the music community. I did read that, um, and you guys have... Uh, you guys put a bunch of stuff out there just as we were getting ready to release an updated roadmap. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to take some of what you guys have said and see if that can be incorporated in any way, shape, or form. Um, because we, again, very much believe in in community uh, having a lot of involvement in this. And you know, we were just going over the music roadmap today, and I think that um, I think you guys are going to be pretty happy with with that. Okay. Uh, any significant design changes made to Mirandus? Um, design changes made to Mirandus, uh, as far as I know right now, are limited to backend server tech. Um, there's there's some, some issues there that would have prevented scaling and uh, the Chilean team um, identified those issues and uh, had previously, several weeks ago, suggested some changes uh, to the Mirandus team. On those uh, on those issues, and you know, they, they, a new build on the server backend was started, and so uh, that is a significant change. But I don't think it's a change that you guys will really notice. Um, it's more of like a backend. How does it work under pressure? Um, let's see. Uh, Onique Games, uh, any progress on spider tanks? Unfortunately, nothing that I can share at this point in time. There's still conversations that are, are happening, but that's that. Um, do we have a uh, rough time scale for the new music paper drop? Asks Herbin Derb. Um, I wanted that to drop today, actually, but I think that some of the conversations that we had, there was a little bit of um, crossed communication between, you know, engineering um, and product. And so there's a little issue that needs to be ironed out and then that should go. Um, let's see. And yes, uh, glitch out says nice. That really lends to the Chilean team really knowing their stuff. They're, they're badasses, guys. I'm, I'm extremely, I'm extremely happy about, uh, about this. Um, you know, the, the, one of the things that's really frustrating about about being in in business and doing this is that you have to make decisions that sometimes are not fun decisions to make but you know when you recognize that a certain change has to be made for the good of the project for a good of, for the good of of the community for a good the good of the game you have to make that change to not make that change no matter how much it sucks because i'll tell you what like i i don't enjoy i have not enjoyed the last like week and a half but um you know unless you are able to you know make the tough call and you know take it on the chin and make the make the change um you know you're you're gonna like you have to do that like you can't not make the change um, and, and, you know, my Carus, um, you know, there's a few people, uh, that are, are, you know, talking about, um, you know, people that have been banned and stuff in discord, like everybody reach out to Nephilim Haas. You're more than welcome to come back. You just can't insult people and, uh, you know, get all aggro. Um, okay. Let's see here. I'm going to, uh, create a program. Um, Paul asks, what's your honest opinion on McCarthy not being on the team? I really like McCarthy, guys. McCarthy is is one of the nicest, coolest, chillest people. Um, and and you know, I'm I'm obviously bummed uh that he's not on the team. I was hoping that there would be some sort of, you know, way where he would, you know, continue and 
you know, in some form or another. Um, he chose not to, uh, to, to do that, I guess. Um, so, you know, that's, that's a, yeah, I'm, I'm bummed. I like McCarthy a lot. I think he's a cool guy. Um, let's see. Herbender will legends, uh, reborn pay out directly in gala rewards. Just looking for a bit of clarity in regards to the process process for which games have their own token, which have gala and why, uh, EOE was gala, but third party. Okay. So okay, this is a little bit of, um, this is a little bit of, of ancient history because there was there has been um, and as there always is a, a a certain amount of like back and forth between two different ways of doing things. For a little while, everyone was looking at it like, okay, everything has to involve Gala the token. Okay, well that doesn't actually work for a variety of reasons, but certain development had already taken place in that, and so some things you can't just like stop and you know re steer completely. Um, you know, and so it's like, okay, well, let's look at this as a series of tests. Uh, a number of these things have worked, you know, okay. Others have not, have not. Um, and so basically that's what it boils down to is it's a number of tests. Now, as we zero in on the various types of economies that work and the various types of token structures that work well, you're going to begin seeing more of those. Um, personally, I don't think that a gala pool based on spend works doesn't just doesn't um and so you know some of those some of those titles uh you know will probably be making some changes to if we have the ability to now that's the other thing though is that we don't always have the ability to make those changes sometimes those changes are driven by uh other you know other forces within the ecosystem or you know other developers and so it's it's a a one of those things that we have to uh that we have to take, you know, one step, one game at a time. Um, chop, pack, punch. Why does everyone think Gala is dead when they look like they're very active? I, we're certainly not dead, guys. We're we're building faster and better than we ever have. Like I am totally, completely, super stoked about where we're going right now, and it's something that I would not be here doing this or spending, you know, every. Every week I'm, you know, there working in person with people. Um, I wouldn't be doing that, okay, if it's not something I believed extremely strongly in. So, you know, we're here. Um, we're, 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 we're building, man. Um, Gala is active. Where is the players? Uh, there are players playing games. I mean, they're there. What do you, what do you want? Um... What games has Emerge published? I don't know. I'm not sure what Emerge is. Um, I may be supposed to know, but I don't. Um, let's see. Will Wright update. I know we're still talking to Will Wright. I don't know if Will Wright has um, anything to do with Vox at the moment, um, but I know that we're we're friendly with them. There's no um, there's no no like issues there. Um, are you able to talk Poker Go? Uh, yeah, I can talk Poker Go. Um, I'm happy to talk about Poker Go. Uh, there's a lot of stuff coming that is poker related in the Gala ecosystem, which I know will make some people very excited. And I'm pretty stoked about. Um, who glitch out once Gala Casino leaks? I can't do Gala Casino leaks, man. Shh. Uh, let's see here. May Mayhem, there is stuff for, um, there is definitely going to be some interesting things uh, coming in that regard. Oh, Emerge is the new partner. Um, like I said, I don't have a lot to do with most of the partners. So right now there's an entire business development team running all over the freaking planet and there are people that are signing up. So I don't know. I don't know what all of them do. Um, I, I know that I see a very steady stream of uh, MOUs that are being signed um, for building um, all around the world. And that makes me super happy, but I, I'm not personally involved in all of them. Um, are marble races still going to be in Miranda's? I have no idea, man. Um, I'm gonna do marble races uh, on my channel. Um, oh man, Anita's asking for leaks. What are you doing, Anita? Um, and Mike Kodos, uh, when will we be able to hear uh, McCarthy. Oh, Anita's talking. 
Okay, you're we unmuted. Want leaks. Yeah. We want oh. leaks, Jason. We want leaks. Give it to us. Come on. She's I'm being berated for leaks. I don't know if I don't know if they could hear that, but I could definitely hear it. The okay. What want leaks? I know everybody always wants leaks. Man, my throat is getting so dry sitting here <laughs> talking. You tell us without uh telling us. <laughs> <laughs> um, virtual hackathon news. Yes, uh, that is actually um, on Eric's. Um, on Eric's. Uh, let's see here. On Eric's desk, quote unquote. Um, let's see here. Uh, no, I was, I was hoping to say he'd be like, yep, that, that, that all looks good. He wanted to do the, uh, the final sign off there. Um, Tweety stuff. There is some, some cool stuff coming for Tweety. Um, superior and creator program leaks. Creator program is something that, man, I really wanted to dig into. Uh, I wanted to dig into this, man. I really look terrible when I'm just like reading on my screen. I'm just, I, there's that delay between, between the live thing and the YouTube. I really, really look, I need to not ever read things with my mouth hanging open like that ever again. Terrible, terrible. Okay. Um, I'm going to bounce over to Gala Gold right now and check things out. Uh, there you go. Oh yeah. They're, they're, they're. Ape at Tendies, thank you for giving me stuff from articles. Um, okay. Lots uh, lots going on in terms of, oh, man, I went to the wrong thing again. Okay, back to Gala Gold, sorry. I clicked on a link, that was terrible. Okay. Um, what else do we have? Man, I can't read this without doing like the uh, reading face. What questions do you guys have, Gala Gold? When Founders Node NFTs, uh, that is be going to be happening here pretty soon, I think, uh, Seneca, uh, because I think that the work on that has finally been completed and the uh, Common Ground World nodes are have dropped. Uh, so I think that that's going to be a cool thing. Um, uh, spicy cabbage, any chance you can update us on listings on popular North American exchanges? So generally speaking, as a rule, we do not attempt to get anything listed on North American exchanges. Um, because the re the reason for that is that that presents regulatory issues. And so we just simply avoid North American exchanges. They're free to list us any of our tokens integrate gala chain but we don't talk to them uh super closely we do however talk to a lot of different other people around the world so i wish that there was some something i could tell you about that um but i i, I really can't okay let's see here what other questions people are asking for leaks 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 uh yes eoe no hassle there i think that that's good um what else do we have and we talk to a lot of people broom i mean yeah obviously we we talk to binance but you know we talk to we talk to a lot of people oh Lemed, you leaked. Is that what happened? Well, ask ask Nephilim Haas. It's I, I defer to him. C Money asks for an update on the thing. Who decides whether to get Will Wright back into Vox? Um, that is a conversation that would have to happen between uh, between you know Will Wright and his team and the Vox team. I don't think it's an impossibility. Um, I just think that uh, there's. That team right now is very much focusing on taking what was promised and saying, okay, look, we have to catch up to all of the promises that were made. Once that's done, then we figure out how to move forward from there. 
Okay. Oh man, World Series of Poker is coming soon. Who are we sending from the Poker Go community? That's a great question. How do we get in World Series of Poker? I need to go do this. I feel like I need to do this. I had my orange hat last time that went really well. I think I think I really actually need to figure out how to do that, guys. What do you think? Should I go should I go try to get into the World Series of Poker? Uh, Mark Lavana asks about Coinbase, uh, still offering Gala type one. Can we get them to drop it and off a Gala two? I absolutely wish that we could. What Coinbase does is very much up to Coinbase. There isn't anything that I can do to influence that. We do still talk to them. I email back and forth with them from time to time just to check in to see how stuff's going, but it is not a thing that we have the ability to, uh, there isn't anything that we have the ability to uh, really inform. Uh, cool. Ask, how's rep going? I was just talking to Neil yesterday. He uh, connected me with some people and they're doing stuff. I believe that uh, the new um, IQA uh, API that is is going to be going in for Gala is going to, uh, for Gala Chain is going to be helping them out a lot because they're having some sort of latency issue. Um and I'm not sure exactly what the, the solve is there, but I'm looking forward to that. Uh, okay, guys. Well, I think that that about... Oh, uh, Aloka uh, or Alocha. I'm not sure whether it's Aloka or Alocha. Can you fire the grit devs? Dude, We uh, this, is the, this is the really, really frustrating thing about... Uh, about, you know, third-party developers. Grit isn't our game. It's their game. We just brought them to the platform. And what they do from there is very much up to them, and there isn't a lot that we can do to inform that, which is so frustrating. I it is so insanely frustrating. You have no idea. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I wish. Uh, that would be that would be awesome because I really loved playing Grit because um, I feel like there needs to be more cowboy stuff. Um, okay, so anyway, guys, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to sign off here for now. And I appreciate it. I appreciate all of you guys that are here. I appreciate everyone coming and listening. Um, I know that it's a challenging time right now for a lot of different uh, for a lot of different people in the ecosystem. There's a lot of people who are super worried about stuff, but we got it. We're all in this together. We're all building together, and uh, I'm super stoked about the future of things. So, anyway, that's it. Bitbender out. Make sure that you like, subscribe, and follow, and I'll see you guys all on the flip side. Quiero un títer de esos que se viste designer Porque ya se viste así nadie costea Baby, siempre que tú posteas El cerebro se me sale por la azotea Te lo juro que si te metes cuartea Dale mami, ponme a prueba Y no hagas caso a lo que hice Tu vestí que ni que yo le metí no hay prueba Me disfrazo de bat Pa' entrar pa' tu bat y cueva Y por si me encuentro al Joker Me compro una 30 nueva Y hablo baby, ese culo que rico se te ve Me tiene en tu directo el día envuelto Se dice que fuiste a Medellín Cuenta, dame que yo te deposito. Quiero ser tu nico, tu mi espósito. Cancela lo tóxico. A ti te gustan Gantel, pero conmigo es más cabrón. La película, el cantante. Y yo sé que tú eres pitcher como Verlander. Si quieres compartirle, estoy quedándome en el bandel. Soy de la calle, no te asustes por mi slang. Él te compro una Mercedes y prendo en fuego la Highlander. Cara que se joda, te pongo en la nómina. Me gusta ese cuerpo con abdominal. A pasar el disco la tiene domina. Blanquita, rubia como Cori. Fueguito al story, ma. Y dije, wow, no baja de ver esa chiste cotizado. Se compró un cartier, el brazo está frisado. Muchos le dan la y no le han dado. Ella no confía en Gantel, tiene el corazón blindado. Ella 
quiero un títere de esos que se viste designer Porque ya se viste así nadie costea Baby, siempre que tú posteas El cerebro se me sale por la azotea Te lo juro que si te metes cuertea Dale mami, ponme a prueba Y no hagas caso a lo que dice tu vestido Que ni que yo le metí, no hay prueba Me disfrazo de bat, pa' entrar pa' tu bat y fue, Por si me encuentro al Joker, me compro una 30 nueva Yo lo baby, ese culo que rico se te ve Me tienes en Twitter todo el día envuelto Se dice que fuiste a medallo y viraste más duro Y los que picharon han vuelto Y ahora está en la tuya Sabes que está rica tuya No quieres compromiso, quieres que todo fluya Yo tampoco solo quiero irme lejos contigo Hasta el tomo presidente muerto Si tú quieres compartir, estoy quedándome en 